Welcome to Cape Connect. Cape Connect is about organizations. It's about Cape Cod possibilities and issues. And boy, do we have an issue on Cape Cod, drug addiction. And our special guest is a producer of a film, which I think everybody is now looking at. It's called What Happened Here? The Untold Story of Addiction on Cape Cod. Yes, it is. Nate Robinson, so glad to have you. And, Thank you. you know, tell me more about that. It's something that I've seen already. It's, uh, it drew an amazing crowd over at the uh, Cape Cod Cultural Center, and uh, you're taking it around different things. What, what is it all about? Well, the, um, first of all, thank you for allowing me onto your show. Um, the documentary that uh, Sam and I produced, um, it started as just kind of us throwing around ideas. We started you know, taking photographs, doing some shorts. We were both, or we're both in recovery from addiction, um, and we kind of wanted to tell the stories that we felt that weren't being told. And know? what are those stories? Uh, it's the stories of the hundreds, if not thousands, of people who live here on Cape Cod among us. There are landscapers, our doctors, our clinicians, mm -hmm. you know, our baristas yeah. um, that have lived in active addiction and have found their way out of, act addic yeah. of active yeah. addiction and, uh, you know, live today in, in recovery. And um, we believe that's the untold story. Too often we focus on all the, the sensational you know, the sensational things that come with addiction, whether mm -hmm. it's crime or, or family breakup, mm -hmm. uh, the arrests, the, um, the overdoses, the death. And that stuff captures headlines, but doesn't tell the whole story. It, it sure does. And, uh, you know, as, you, as you're about to tell me about it more, I've got to say that uh, just uh, today in the mail, the Cape Cod Chronicle came. Mm -hmm. And uh, there it is. Communities pay the high cost of heroin use. Mm -hmm. And it's the unseen predator as they see it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it is making the headlines, but it isn't Absolutely. telling the story that you're telling, is it? It isn't getting down to the personal. Yeah, and I think that's the, uh, I mean, all the media attention has done good things for bringing addiction from a law enforcement issue to a medical issue, which is what it really is. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the one, you know, one of the benefits of having all this, you know, attention on the issue is that we can start finally talking about it, bringing it out of the shadows and having a very public discussion. I mm -hmm. believe that, um, you know, sunlight is the best disinfectant for misinformation. And, yeah. and talking about these kind of issues, um, we can educate the public. You know, let's look at the, in the 1980s during, in the 90s during the crack epidemics. Um, when crack cocaine was everywhere. The solution to that problem was to lock everybody up. It became a, a law enforcement issue. It was mm -hmm. all about crime and punishment. Um, that solution failed miserably. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we put entire generations in prison. Um, mm -hmm. We broke up families. We, we gutted communities. And it took so much money, the money Absolutely. could have been spent differently. Absolutely. And uh, today we're kind of taking a different approach to it. Uh, since the, um, the heroin epidemic has hit the suburban areas, um, it's kind of, I guess, ruffled the feathers of policymakers. You know, politicians are beginning to take notice that this is an issue that they just can't write off. It's not an issue that they can write off as an urban problem. Um, it's an issue that we've been living with with a long time and uh, too often we're afraid to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. And for the first time, it's being talked about as a medical issue. And I think that's really the important, mm -hmm. the important piece mm -hmm. that, um, that jail, longer jail sentences are the solution here. You yeah. know, cracking down doors isn't the solution here. Mm -hmm. Busting people on hand to hands mm -hmm. isn't the solution. It doesn't do any good. It quite simply ignores the problem. I think here on Cape Cod, we all know somebody um, or have ourselves been through addiction, as is my case. And mm -hmm. the things that helped me out were a community of people who got together and talked about it, who found their way out of addiction, and I relied on those people to help me find my way out. Just by chance, last night, uh, the PBS News ended with a little piece about a woman who was, you know, feeling she was about at death's door. She Absolutely. couldn't break out of it. And she went to a choir group that was for addicts. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, with that ethnic background, she got into the swing of it, and you know she's been clean for many years. Yep. It saved her life. Mm -hmm. It made her life. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think a sense of purpose um, is definitely what helped save my life and, and kind of give me a new, a realigned sense of identity. Mm -hmm. um, 
You know, well, the, the well, tell me more about the film because I, I, I have quite a few comments I'd like to yeah. make and questions to ask about. Uh, you know, how has how has addiction worked over the years? How is it working in other kinds of contexts? But you know, the the film uh, mm -hmm. it started how it started as uh, you know my my friend Sam who uh, couldn't be here today due to actually uh, exams this week. So yeah, well, <laughs> Cape Cod Community College. <laughs> yep. Um, he started, uh, uh, he was about 90 days off of, uh, off of narcotics, right? And uh, he just had got laid off from his job. Mm -hmm. He was kind of feeling a little squirrely. He knew he needed something to give himself a sense of purpose to occupy his time, something mm -hmm. to give him a reason to wake up in the morning. <laughs> he started doing a, um, a, pho a photography project, taking pictures of his friends who were in recovery, different spots that he had used at, different spots that meant things to him. Um, and what he found that it didn't really shed light the proper light on uh, the issues he wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, being in the recovery community, I hear hundreds and hundreds of stories of people, you know, of, of their life in and out of addiction and the struggles they have gone through. And um, outside of those networks, those stories aren't told. And he wanted to really put a voice to that and really to I shine see. a line on it, yeah. to shine a light on it. And that's what the film began, just interviewing a couple of his friends. Uh, what turned into just a couple of interviews, he wasn't really planning on doing anything. Mm -hmm. um, some people heard about it and then it ended up getting a ton of community support. I mean, we're talking funders, um, venues to play the movie at. Um, mm -hmm. And right off the rip, it just hit kind of the zeitgeist of the community, which mm -hmm. was that everybody had a stake in addiction and everybody had an opinion and everybody most importantly wanted to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they really gave him the microphone, you know, and the yeah. means to tell the story. And uh, besides the tales of people that had uh, addiction, how mm -hmm. they got into it, yep. how they uh, attempted to recover uh, once clean, how you keep fighting the drug or how you put it in your past. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, you would have had the sheriff of Marshall County on it. Yep, we had Sheriff Jim Cummins, mm -hmm. um, who's been instrumental in kind of looking at addiction as maybe more of a, a medical issue mm -hmm. and making the appropriate changes in Barnstable County Prison. He's been, uh, he, you know, policy changes like instituting Vivitrol, which is, um, it helps people when they're coming out of prison kind of safeguard them from using opiates. It's a blocker for opiates so they can't is feel that, the effects. Is that an injection? That it's an injection, yeah, that they get and it, it makes it so you can't feel the effect of opiates for 30 days. And mentally that's huge for somebody coming out of prison, yes. knowing that they can't get high on opiates. Yes. Um, it can really provide them with a leg up. And though it seems like small steps in the right direction, I mean, that's what it is. They're small mm -hmm. steps that are being taken in the right mm -hmm. direction. Yeah. Um, and not just in our own community, just a couple days ago, and I don't know if you heard about this, but Gloucester Police Department put out a statement. And what they had decided to do, because their community up there has been so ravaged by addiction, is they decided to um, open kind of door policy. Anybody coming into their station, whether they had drugs on them or not, they weren't going to prosecute them, they weren't going to lock them up. They'd assign them with an advocate, and that day they'd find them a bed in treatment. Um, wow. And that's huge. Wow, for it surely a, is. And, uh, for and, a police and, department and, to do and, that. And that is going to have a positive effect rather than, as you were saying about the crack cocaine, war. Absolutely. Uh, it's going to work. And what percentage of the cases? Maybe half of them, perhaps? It's tough to find accurate but, statistics but at least, on that. At least that's not a zero percent. Absolutely. And yeah. I think it has a lot to do with how we value life, you know? Yeah. Um, even if there's just a one percent chance that somebody makes it. Yeah. I think it, it speaks to, if I have a family member st struggling through addiction, I don't want to throw them away and yeah. lock away the key. Yeah. I don't want to just yeah. write them off as a victim of, yeah. of, of a medical yeah. illness. I want to yeah. put the resources we have as a community, um, everything we got at towards, yeah. towards helping them get better. Yeah, well, caring about everyone. I mean, when you look at the Nepal earthquake mm -hmm. and, you know, all these rescuers are going in and they already know that most of the people are gone, but there are few as they worked, a few could be saved. Absolutely. And they found a few young children. They found a woman who was over 100, wow. still alive se after several days yes. in the rubble. And you know, as you say, yeah. one or two, that's important. Yeah, I think yeah. it just speaks to how we treat fellow human beings. You yeah, know? yeah, and uh, how they're regarded because that's important, isn't it, in the recovery process 
not to be regarded as, you know. Absolutely. All the kinds of words that have been used in the past, I won't say any of them. Yeah, one of the most difficult things about recovery is reintegrating into society and dealing with the stigma of addiction, which yeah. is very real. I just had a friend of mine, he's been looking for employment for about a year, and he keeps getting spit back out because of a past mm -hmm. criminal history. And he's been on the right track for quite some time. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, you know, the stigma of addiction, the stigma of what people think about you, immediately changes, you know. Um, your opportunities, your avail your ability to access, you know, mm -hmm. um, whether it's employment or benefits, even, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it's it's a very real stigma. Or, or social, I would imagine as well, which, Absolutely. which counts into their life in terms of uh, how they feel about themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, well, besides uh, uh, Sheriff of Bouncebuck County, you uh, were over the F Falmouth Police Department yeah, and had. Yep. Uh, was it the chief of police? Captain Jeff Smith uh, yeah. was kind enough to give us an interview and yeah. uh, a really good insight in what they're dealing with right there. Yeah, and so I think uh, similarly in uh, this end of the Cape, uh, the Harwich and Chatham police, as I've seen stories in the Cape Cod Chronicle, really are treating this as something that must be done and must be done in skillfully rather than brutally. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I think uh, the police are feeling overwhelmed, just like everybody is, with the uh, opiate epidemic that's been happening. Mm -hmm. Just recently, some statistics were put out by Barnstable County mm -hmm. that show that there are at least 5,600 active addicts on Cape Cod. Mm -hmm. That's a huge amount, a huge amount. That's something like uh, a little under 20% of the population is, um, is addicted actively. Now. As a police department, you know, they're not trained medically to deal with addiction as a disease. They've been trained as police officers. That's their but, job. But they, but they, they have to, if someone is there lying dead with their lips blue, mm -hmm. almost dead, they can't tell, they're yep. going to try and save the person. Exactly. And that's where we began to see the, uh, the programs like the Narcan program start, yeah. com start coming um, into, into fruition and having great success. It was the Quincy Police Department that pioneered the Narcan program mm -hmm. and that fought for it originally in Massachusetts. Um, they were tired of watching kids die in front of them when they had the antidote that was totally harmless at their fingertips. So mm -hmm. what they did was they fought for the ability to carry that to um, overdose scenes. And, um, and do they you saved know, hundreds of lives. Yeah, and do, do you know uh, in uh, Falmouth, for instance, where you're more uh, clear on what exactly what's happening, uh, mm -hmm. is there an antidote in each police car? Uh, yes, I believe Falmouth, they carry Narcan now. It's standard operating procedure. And is it, is it given as an injection or is it's it It's given inhaling? as a nasal spray. Yeah. Um, so when it's a suspected overdose, they spray it into the person who's overdosed. They spray it into their nostrils and um, it will remove the opiate from the um, from the synapse. So I, I have heard that sometimes people have such a high level of dose that it works perhaps uh, 30 minutes. Yeah, that sometimes it, still, it takes you more might than one. You see the second dose. And, Absolutely. And uh, I guess they ought to have at least two cans in their car. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they do. Than, um, and that's becoming um, the norm across Cape Cod. I'm sad to say that it hasn't happened all across Cape Cod yet. There are still mm -hmm. departments that have not um, yet um, started mm -hmm. carrying Narcan. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, there's a lot of misinformation that goes around Narcan. A lot of people believe that it enables addicts because um, they, they, there's this, you know, illusion that it will enable them to keep using. And the reality is that um, it saves lives. It doesn't rehabilitate. Mm -hmm. You know, Narcan won't no. rehabilitate you, but it will save your life. Mm -hmm. I can say for myself, Narcan saved my life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and it gave me a second chance at, uh, at kind of living. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. Uh, there's connections, of course, with the opiates, and uh, people ask, how is that related to alcoholism? Mm -hmm. Because uh, over the century, last century, there was prohibition early on. Mm -hmm. The prohibition put a lot of people in jail. The prohibition didn't do anyone made, any made good. Made a lot of bootleggers very wealthy. Yeah, it did. <laughs> and uh, those <laughs> criminals continued into our society after uh, prohibition uh, was eliminated. Absolutely. Uh, and so, I think the how same. Is, how is that comparison? Is it a good comparison? I think it's absolutely a good comparison. I think the same goes. Uh, no matter what the substance is, whether it's crystal meth, whether it's marijuana, whether it's alcohol, 
Mm -hmm. um, all mind and mood altering narcotics are the same and they yeah. should be dealt with the same. Yeah, well, uh, well certainly alcohol causes a lot of deaths and absolutely you just know, here, Cape, here here's yeah, yeah. On Cape Cod alcohol addiction is endemic. I had to look up what that word meant when I first read it. Yeah. Um, it means that it's unique to this area. The one thing Cape Cod has is a plethora of alcoholism. Mm -hmm. Nine percent of the population here on Cape Cod is addicted to alcohol. Uh -huh. Now when you sprinkle opiates on that, and as we know, addiction is genetic, when you start over-prescribing opiate medications on a population of people that are addicted genetically to alcohol, mm -hmm. you're going to get yourself a heroin crisis. Well, I guess that's true, but here's a Cape Cod Times just today up in the corner. More women now drinking heavily. Well, okay, mm -hmm. uh, I guess. And uh, down below, uh, they're talking about uh, it, uh, uh, uh giving an okay deal with the sober house Absolutely. owner. And so there's another, you know, thing of alcohol being. You mentioned marijuana. Now, how is marijuana working into the opiate addiction problem? Um, I view. You know, marijuana ad addiction, and people often say you can't get addicted to marijuana. I, I don't believe that, and I don't, you know, if we look at the science behind yeah. it, you can absolutely become addicted to marijuana, yeah, even yeah, if you're not yeah. getting immediate physical withdrawals like heroin. Yeah. Well, I think people can get addicted to sugar drinks. Yeah, and absolutely, they they I have been. <laughs> and they can't get off uh, their kick. Uh, yep. I'm not saying, uh, you know, some people like chocolate. Well, okay, yeah. for that, but, but sugar for sure, you can be addicted to. Absolutely. Sugar. I think when you make blanket statements like everything, all marijuana should be illegal, you can't buy or sell or grow it, yeah. you run into the same problems that we did during the Prohibition era. Mm -hmm. um, and that's as you, you rule an entire class of people illegal, what they're doing, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and furthermore, you begin to criminalize a medical condition. Mm -hmm. As an addict, my identity is criminal. It's a felony mm -hmm. when I'm active. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You can't help a person when you've deemed them a criminal mm -hmm. at that rate. Mm -hmm. um, for me personally, I think decriminalization of addiction across the board would do wonders for opening up funds and services towards serious rehabilitation efforts. And I don't think we're going to see results until we start doing that. And things like that have been done that, in Europe. You know, now that's the story that's not getting out to Cape Cod. And, and maybe another documentary besides the one that uh, you've done. Um, uh, Democracy Now! plays on Channel 99, yep. and uh, Amy Goodman brings many people from the liberal side, left side, and uh, I would say in the middle, to the Hour News program. And I'm holding up a book here, which uh, I learned about because she had the author. Uh, Jonathan Hari has written a book about a hundred years of the drug war mm -hmm. in our country and connecting it to as we've been talking about uh, prohibition and alcohol and looking at what would happen if uh, there was a change in the legality of the taking of some of the drugs by the people who were already addicted. Mm -hmm. So if there is a person who is in recovery, not yet clean, uh, has to continue to have uh, his fix, mm -hmm. uh, that would be done in a clinic. Mm -hmm. And at the time, they can, again, have a social worker talking about Absolutely. how to get back into the normal lifestyle. Uh, and, if, uh, and if this were happening, there'd be less drug dealers around, of course. Mm -hmm. There'd be less deaths because they wouldn't be picking up Yep. drugs that, you know, were not, that had other poisons in them. Who Absolutely. knows what they are when you buy it Absolutely. off the street. The and philosophy of harm reduction has, yeah. I mean, the science has been universal and consistent on the issue that it works. When you, um, for instance, needle exchanges. Mm -hmm. um, when we looked at, when we started instituting needle exchanges into areas, we saw a drop in the spread of hepatitis C uh, and HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw a lowering of mortality rates. People were, mm -hmm. were living. We saw an mm -hmm. increase in people accessing social services from rehabilitation yeah. to counseling because they were allowed yeah, yeah. to work, you know, work with social workers. Yeah. Um, the same went for safe injection sites yeah. in Portugal and in uh, Vancouver. 
And, and this is this is done in uh, the uh, book very very cleanly. And if people want to know more about it, Chasing the Scream by Jonathan Hari mm -hmm. is, I think, an excellent source to see. This journalist has spent several years looking at this story mm -hmm. and reporting it, but has to come out to Cape Cod. Very few people are going to buy this book. It's I not might buy that book. <laughs> I'll give it to you after. It. Yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> but, it, but it's also, you know, it's, it's not in a library right now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's a story also that has to come to Cape Cod. I believe so. And we, we, we have yet to see this. Mm -hmm. um, what do you what do you forecast? What what do you think? What, how how's it going? And and you know, there are these programs. Uh, is this twelve step program really working very well? I know it provides comfort, but mm -hmm. a lot of people say, you know, it's it's not working as well as it should. You know, twelve step programs have been around for a long time. Yeah. Um, and they existed originally because there was simply nowhere else for people yeah, um, yeah, who were addicted yeah, to substances, yeah. whether it was alcohol or drugs, to go. Yeah. They were peer support groups. Yeah, yeah. And they do work for a lot of people. Do and they? some people they don't work for. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's one of many tools that are going to be used to combat addiction. And I don't, I even feel uncomfortable saying combat addiction. I feel like uh, treating addiction. Treating addiction. Um, well, well, Medicare finally. Uh, pay for some of the treatment that's necessary. I really hope because so. Because to pay, you know, if somebody is very rich and really decides to be clean, mm -hmm. that's expensive. Yeah, but there are private rehab facilities that will do that. Now, if you're poor and you're on health insurance, you know, you have like Mass Health, for instance, yeah. you can't access a lot of these private yeah. rehab yeah. facilities yeah. and you can't access any treatment at a hospital either. Yeah. So you enter into this gray zone where we acknowledge that you have a health problem. Mm. but we won't pay for you to do anything about mm -hmm. it. And I think uh, we see that happen over and over and over again today. Yeah. Our show will be winding up in a little while. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, every little thing we can say yet is, is going to be helpful to our viewers. Uh, I think uh, that if we see this not as a mental disease, if we see it as like someone has diabetes 2. If you have diabetes 2, you've got a sugar problem. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you can kill yourself if you don't take care of yourself Absolutely. with insulin and all other things. And so will we finally look at drug addiction this way? Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think that's a really good analogy you made. Uh, I've heard of addiction being compared to diabetes, type 2 diabetes often. A lot of people in the medical community make that com comparison, mm -hmm. and I trust them more than I trust my own yeah, thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I think it's a fair comparison. Um, y if somebody gets type 2 diabetes, putting them in prison won't do any good. Yeah. Um, yelling at them for eating sugar won't do any good. What you need to do is bring them into a medical establishment, have them work with a caseworker, treat their disease for what it is, mm -hmm. um, and work with them in terms of changing their lifestyle so yeah. that they can manage their disease. Yeah. Um, I don't see why addiction, if we really believe it's a medical condition, should be treated any differently. Yeah. I'm so glad I met you. Absolutely. It was a pleasure Thanks for having you on the show. show. And I'm going to tell people that uh, they've got to get out and uh, get on the internet and take a look at what happened here. Just put in what happened here, YouTube, and you'll get a five-minute yep. uh, preview, a very kind, uh, you call it a trailer, mm -hmm. and you begin to see the superb job that someone is now getting the story out. Uh, there's more to do, and uh, Cape Connect will be back with other issues, but we will come back with addiction again. Terribly important. Thanks for watching, folks. Thank you. Thanks, Bill.